Our story starts in uh, 1872. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hillis Fogg was a tall, handsome Irish gentleman. He lived in London in a, a comfortable a house in Burlington Gardens. Didn't um, work beautiful. But um, have had uh, lots um, of uh, money. He wasn't married, so he didn't have a wife or children. But he had a servant who did the homework for him. Pog went to his club every day. He ate lunch. Were at 12 o'clock and when read a newspaper, a newspaper in the afternoon. Go. In the evening, he had dinner and talked with his friends <coughs> well. Mm -hmm. At midnight, he came home and went straight to bed. Fog's servant was a young man. James Foster. Foster didn't uh, have much uh, to do because Fogg spent most of his time at the club. Start. But Fogg, Fogg was very particular in the morning. Start. He always works watch he breaks breakfast on time and and he wanted uh, where the water were were he bath uh, to be not to not hot and not to too cold mm -hmm. on the morning of second october 1872, Foster <clears throat> um, brought folk some water for his bath. But the water was hot, and so Foster lost his job. Folk had to uh, to find to find a new servant and later that morning a young man looking uh, for what at uh, at fox uh, house. Your French, I think, says fog uh, when the young man sat down in front of him. What's your name? Jen Pesheparted, sir, and swerved the young man. Mother G. Pospantun is born early here in French. I've got this name because I I work here in my Extinct jobs in lots of uh, different places. As go, I came to England to work, and and now I'm looking for a quiet job. Go, Mr. Fogg. I have heard that you're the quietest of Englishmen. Go. You are looking for a servant and I want to work for you. Go. Good, said Mr. Fogg. You can start and once was the time. Go. A separate hello. Look at uh, this watch. 22 minutes past 11, he said. Mm -hmm. Your watch is love as well a fog. It's half past 11.
x good that when I always go to my club mm -hmm. goodbye I will be home at midnight the fog left the house and passed part two uh, how the father does and start them clean. Okay, start. Mr. Fox, a very quiet gentleman. He thought, mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that afternoon, Fog read an unusual article in the Time newspaper. And go. At the club, Fook was sitting as usually with his friends, Mr. Stewart and, and Mr. Ralph. Stewart was an engineer and Ralph worked at the Bank of England. Mm -hmm. They talked about the newspaper article. Start. They will soon catch the gentleman Phil said the banker Ralph. Mm -hmm. With trains and ships, today's policemen can travel fast. Go. But the thieves can travel fast these days to set start the engineer. Today you can travel around the world in eight days, said Ford. It say that here in the times. Okay. On paper, maybe, but trains have accidents, ships go through bad weather, and plants go wrong. You? You couldn't do it in 18 days, said students to. And still. Yes, you could cry for if uh, your careful edit time. I uh, careful go it. Sure. Yeah. Yes. You could mm -hmm. really and sit star. Try, give it a try, okay? Go. Look, if you can go off around the world and be back here in 80 days, I'll, I'll give you 20,000 pounds. One more time. I'll write, I'll show you. Go. I'll leave tonight at be back on the 21st of December, answered Fog. Good. Uh, and if I can't uh, do it, I will give you 20... Mm -hmm. uh, 20 pounds, pounds. Uh, he said to start. Train for France was learning at quarter to nine that evening. Mm -hmm. Fog arrived home at eight o'clock exactly. Mm -hmm. Passepartout was very sur surprised to see him home so so early. Mister. Mr. Fogg, what are you doing here at this time? That, uh, that you were coming ho home at midnight. I know we are leaving for France uh, tonight, Fogg answered. Okay. We are going around the world in 80 days. Oh no, not more traveling. Wanted a quiet job, thought Passport too. But what about our luggage? He cried.
20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll uh, take uh, only one uh, small uh, case uh, with uh, uh, some uh, shorts and uh, socks uh, in it. We can buy uh, more things later. Uh, Folk uh, part uh, put um, uh, 20,000 uh, uh, pounds uh, in his uh, travel uh, bag for the um, journey to 1,000 pounds more in the bank to pay Stuart if arrived home late. We left that night and took to a train to Dover, where we got on a ship to France. We traveled across the English Channel and took another train to Paris. Okay. From where we took a train to Italy. In Italy, we took a ship carried by Mongolia to Port Said in Egypt. Port Said is a town on the Mediterranean Sea at the beginning of the Suez Canal. When we arrived in Susan at the hour end of the canal on 19th October, and English detective Mr. Fix was waiting there. She was working for Scotland Yard, the most important police office in London. He left London soon after the money was stolen from in the Bank of England. Mm -hmm. Scotland Yard thought. The, the gentleman the world go abroad with all his stolen money, money so then sent detectives mm, to many different communities to look for him so fix works are now looking in Suez. Olga visit the passport office for a visa Mer uh, fix some him what at all hell hell Handsome English gentleman, he found maybe maybe he is a gentleman that I must learn more about him. After Fogg left the passport office with his visa, he spoke to passport tycoon in the street and then went back onto the Mongolia. The ship was wanting to travel down, down the Red Sea to Aden and then across the Arabi Arabian Sea to Bombay. When Fogg left his servant in the, in the street, Fix went and, and spoke to Aspetu. Has your master been to the passport office for a visa? Asked Fix. Yes, he has answered. Passport suits. Are we in Seuss? Yes, we are, said Fix. Seuss in inject? Asked. Passport suits. That's right, said Fix. Egypt in Africa? Asked Passportum. Uh, of course, said Fix. Really? It's all so strange for me, you know. I was working for my master, Mr. Phil and Fogg, in London, you see. I want a quiet life as a servant after years of traveling from place to place and doing different jobs. But then Mr. Fogg came home in the evening and told me that we were going to Paris by train and ship that night. I see. So you and your master left London very quickly when? Asked Fix. Yes, we did. And after then, we hurried through France, my home country, and Italy too. We've been traveling for a week uh, without shopping. Do you know Mr. Fogg well? No, sir. I started my job with him on the day when we left England. Correct. And where are we going now? We're going around the world in eight days, said Passport. It's Mr. Fogg's idea. Go. Yeah. 
right, and has Mr. Fogg uh, got lots of money? Yes, he has. He's got thousands of pounds with him for the job. Are you going to visit anything in Egypt while you are there? No, we are not. We are traveling to Aden on the Mongolia this is afternoon. And after that we are going to Bombay. But right now I'm going to buy some new shirts and shoes for Mr. Fogg. We didn't bring much with us, you know, only a small case. We left London very quickly, as I said. Well, I know a very good closer shop here. I take you all there if you like, said Fix. Thank you very much. And it's very passport so Fix took Passport to the closet shop at once and he let him the looking at the sh shirts and shoes. Uh, a short time uh, later, Fix got on the Mongolia with Fog and the Passport too. But they didn't see him arrive. After some days at sea, Passepartout met Fix on the ship. Mm -hmm. Hello, I know you. You helped me in Swiss. Passport said with a cheerful smile. Yes, that's right, I did. And you're uh, the son of that strange Englishman, answered the detective. That's right, Mr. Fix. Are you going to Bombay too? Yes, I am, said Fix. After that, they met and talked many times on the ship, and Fix always asked m about uh, Mr. Fogg. Mr. Fix is a friendly man, sought for passport too. Mm -hmm. When the Mongolia stopped at Aden, Fogg went to the passport office. Uh, there were a visa for his passport. After that, the ship crossed the Arabian Sea. They finally arrived in Bombay. Oh, on the 20th of October, today, early. Uh-huh. At half past four in the afternoon, Fogg and Passportu left the ship. They wanted to get the next train to Calcutta and it was leaving at eight o'clock. Fogg went to the passport office for a visa. Then he ate dinner at the station, but he wasn't very happy with the food there. Uh, that afternoon, Passportu visited uh, the temple at Melbourne. Hill, but he didn't take off his shoes when he went in, and and the visitors must always take off their shoes when when they visit the temple in India. The India priests at the temple were angry, so they pull, pulled the passport to shoes of uh, of and threatened at him. Passportus was scared, and he ran away without his shoes. At the same time, time Fix went to the main Bombay police station and told the about Fogg. I am writing for some important papers from Scotland Yard. Have you got any news about them for me? asked Fix. But there was no news from London. That evening, Fogg and Passport got on the train for Calcutta. At the train station, Fix had Passport to tell Fogg about his visit to the temple at Malibu Hill. Good, he said. They've broken the law here in India, and maybe I can arrest them for that. I must learn more. So Fix stayed in Bombay. The next day, when the train stopped at Buhambur, Passport to bought some Indian slippers to wear. After two more days, the train stopped in the village of Kobe, and everyone got off. Engineer, we are walking on the railway, and, and it wasn't finished. There were 80 kilometers without a railway between Kobe and Allahabad. 
So in the Kobe Passport Tour found an elephant to take them to Allahabad. bed. And folk bought it from its owner to sound pounds. When folk passport uh, and a young indeed good road off on it. Uh, what will Mr. Frog do with the elephant when we arrive in a Allahabad? Uh, passport worried. After today's dinner, uh, they stopped near a temple in the village of uh, Pilagim. The old indeed prince wo uh, wo was dead, and his be uh, beautiful young wife, the princess, had to die with him in a big fire. This happened a lot in India in those days. We must help that woman, said for. Paspar told, listened uh, to his master and smiled. Early the next day, the priests uh, started the fire. In the orange light, Fox saw something strange. It amassed uh, the priests and Fox too. The princess, uh, the prince stood up and brought the princess out of the fire. And his wife came nearer, folk locked the door carefully and picked the prince. But it wasn't the prince, it was Passepartout in the prince's closet. We must hurry, Mr. Frog, quickly, let's go, said Passepartout quietly to folk. <laughs> Suddenly the priest saw the dead prince's body on the fire. So, uh, the man in the prince's uh, clothes wasn't uh, the prince. Uh, when the priests uh, saw that, uh, they were very angry. Fog, passport to the princess and the Indian guide left very quickly on the elephant. At last, Fog, uh, uh, passport to and the Indian princess arrived at the railway station in Allahabad. Their Fog uh, gave the Indian got some money for bringing them safely from Kunhalli and for helping to rescue the princess from village. Thank you for your help, he said to the guide, and here is something more for you, my good man. With that, he gave the elephant to the Indian. Uh, oh, thank you, sir, answered the guide. You are very kind. Goodbye, Kiomi, says Passepartout, giving the elephant some sugar cubes to eat. After that, Fogg took the princess to the station waiting room, and then he sent Passepartout to a clothes shop to buy some European clothes for her. Passepartout soon came back with uh, a checked dress and coat for the princess. On the train going to Kaluta, the princess spoke to Fogg for the first time. My name is Mr. Uh, Auda, she, uh, she said. Thank you for rescuing me. Her English was very good. Welcome, I'm very happy to be able to help you. My name is Phyllis Fogg. Mr. Fogg, you know that I must leave India now. Said Mrs. Auda, if my husband's family find me, they'll hurt me. Why not come with Passepartout and me? Fox said, we are traveling around the world, you know. Thank you, I will, said Mrs. Auda. I've got a cousin in Hong Kong and I'd like to go to him for help. Then we'll take you to Hong Kong, uh, answered Fox Marin. But on 25th of October, when they were walking out the Kakuta train station, a policeman stopped them at the door. And is it man your servant? He asked, looking in Passepartout. Yes, asked Fogg. Then come with me, said the policeman. The two of you. Can this young lady come too? asked Fogg, looking at Mr. Mrs. Alder. She can, said the policeman. After that, the policeman took them to the court to see a judge. Why have you brought us here? asked Fogg. 
because your criminals answered the judge. But what's your crime? I'm asking Frog surprised. You've broken the law in a temple, said the judge. There were some Indian priests in a court to Frog. So, are you talking about the temple in Pilija? asked Frog, think about uh, rescuing Miss Alada from the fire there. Was in the room too, but Fogg and his friends couldn't see him behind all the priests. It was a good idea to bring this priest from Bombay by train and by horse, and courage thought the detective. Now Fogg and his servant can't leave Calcutta, and I'll have time to get the papers from London and arrest Fogg. Fogg, Passepartout and Mrs. Saouda hurried from their court and went straight onto the ship, the Aragoon. It was leaving for Hong Kong that afternoon. Fix quickly sent a telegram to London. The servant broke the law by entering the Mulberry Hill, temple wearing his shoes, and so he must go to Pearson or pay a lot of money, said the judge. So, Frog happily gave two thousand pounds to the court, and the judge took the money and said, Thank you, you can go. Because Fogg traveled slowly between Holti and Alhamdulillah, and because he stopped to help Mrs. Wanda Fix and Priest arrived in Calcutta before him. No, I am talking about the Malabar Hill Temple in Bombay, said the judge, and he put Passepartout's shoes on the table in front of him. Fix was in the room too, but Fogg and his friends couldn't see him behind all the priests. It was a good idea to bring this priest from Bombay by train and by house and the carriage, thought the detective. Now Fogg and his servant can't leave Calcutta, and I will have time to get the papers from London and arrest Fogg. Because Fogg traveled slowly between Kalbai and Allahabad, and because he stopped to help Mrs. Auda fix and the priests arrived in the Calcutta before him. Your servant broke the law by entering the Malabar Hill Temple wearing his shoes, and so he must uh, go to prison or pay a lot of money, said the judge. So Fogg happily gave two thousand pounds to the court, and the judge took the money and said, Thank you, you can go. Fogg, Passepartout, and Mrs. Alda hurried from the court and went straight onto the ship, the Rangoon. It was leaving for Hong Kong, and that afternoon, Fix quickly sent uh, a telegram to London. Telegram. Gentlemen, thief going to Hong Kong. Send papers for me to arrest him there. Fix. Went after Fogg. Mrs. Auda and Passepartout onto the wagon. Passepartout met him later on the long sea journey across the Bay of Bengal and, uh, and the South China Sea. What are you doing here? I last saw you in Bombay and before then is used. Right password, so where is your price? I am traveling to Hong Kong, said Fix. I have work to do there. They talked for some time and passport out told Fix all about Mrs. Elder and about Mr. Fogg having to pay 2,000 pesos for them to leave the country in Calcutta. Fix smiled and said uh, nothing about bringing the Indian present from Bombay or how he was also in the court in Calcutta. After that, passport saw Fix every day on the ship. Uh, there was uh, something strange about Mr. Fix, uh, he felt. Maybe he's a detective, Passepartout thought. From Mr. George from the Gentleman's Club in London. Does he want to start Miss Fogg from traveling around the world in 80 days? On 6 November they arrived in Hong Kong. The Miss Oda tried to find her family, but she learned that her cousin now lived in Poland. 
She was very sad when she heard this news. Don't worry, you can travel with us around the world, Fox said, and then we'll take you to your cousin in Holland after we arrive back in London. You're very kind, said Mr. Aude. Thank you, I'll go with you. So Fox told uh, Passepartout to buy free tickets on the ship uh, the Carnatic. It was leaving for Yokohama in Japan the next morning. But when uh, Passepartout went to the ticket office, he learned that the Carnatic was leaving early that evening. Passepartout met uh, Fix near the ticket office. Passepartout met Fix near the ticket office. Come for a walk with me, said Fix. On the walk, Fix told Passepartout. Your Mr. Fogg, a gentleman thief. He stole 50,000 pounds from the Bank of England. I am a detective. I want to arrest him and you must help me. I am looking for Mr. Stewart from Mr. Fogg's club in London, asked Passepartout. No, I am working for Scotland Yard, answered Fix. Passepartout didn't want to help Fix. But then they went to a coffee and sat down for a cup of tea. Detective didn't to stop talking. Uh, he was very friendly. Passepartout felt tired after a long day and after some time he fell asleep. asleep. Now he can't tell folk about the new departure time of the Carnatic, thought Fix. Good, so the ship will leave tonight, but without fog on it. With that, Fix left Passepartout sleeping in the cafe. Mm -hmm. Later that evening, Passepartout opened his eyes and looked around him. He was in the cafe in Hong Kong. But where was Fix? He couldn't see the detective anywhere. Mr. Fox is a good man. He is kind and generous to people. A third passport to that Scotland Yard detective Mr. Fix is wrong. Uh, my mister uh, isn't the gentleman thief. Uh, but wait a minute, what's the time? He looked at his watch closely. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's late. The Canadian's leaving tonight. I must run, he cried. He hurried out of the cafe and went to the harbor. The passengers were getting on the kinetics and Passepartout went onto the ship at once. Soon after that, the ship left. Mm -hmm. Fogg and Mrs. Ode were in the need, with nobody to bring them the news of a change in the kinetics <coughs> the page time, they were happily having dinner together at their hotel. Mr. Fogg was a little surprised uh, when his servant didn't return to the hotel uh, that evening. But because he thought that the Carnatic wasn't leaving <coughs> until the next morning, he wasn't very worried. The next morning, on the 7th uh, November, when he Passepartout wasn't back at the hotel, Fogg began to feel more worried, but he didn't show it. Hmm? He went and got the small traveling case and then and Mrs. Auda took a car down to the hard door. They wanted to get on the Carnatic, but uh, it wasn't uh, there. Where is uh, our ship? Grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, Fix was waiting by the ticket office and he went and spoke to Fogg. The Carnatic left for Japan last night, he said, and the next ship to Yokohama leaves next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you know all this? asked Fogg. I wanted to travel to Japan on the Carnatics, uh, said Fix. I came here earlier this morning to get on the ship and I was very angry when I heard the news. Part 2, Mr. Oda asked Fogg what's happened to him. Uh, I don't know, Fogg answered. It's all very unusual. He's a good servant, so something strange has happened to him. He'll come back to me, I know. Uh -huh. But we can't wait for him here. I leave some money for him at our hotel. With that, he can travel back to London without us. You and I must leave Hong Kong today, Miss Oda. There are more ships in the harbor. We must take off the house. Fox spoke to the captains of many ships that morning. 
He asked all of them, can you take me to Japan, but they all said no, fine. finally Fox spoke to the captain of a small boat, the Tankadere, his name was John B Banzi. Can you take uh, us to Yokohama? asked Fox. In my little boat, uh, laughed uh, Bansbo. No, sir, uh, there are lots of uh, storms at the uh, sea between uh, here and uh, Japan in November. I pay you 100 uh, pounds uh, a day for every day of our journey, uh, and I'll give you 200 pounds more if you. Uh, if we arrive uh, in Yokohama uh, by the 14th, when, when our ship to America leaves, uh, do you want to do the job? Uh, no, sir. Uh, it too dangerous. But uh -huh. I can take you to Shanghai for that money, and you can get on your ship to America there. It starts from Shanghai and then it goes to Yokohama on the way up to America. Uh, the ship leaves Shanghai on 11th of November at, at 7 o'clock in the evening. Good. Then, uh, then take us to Shanghai. How soon can we leave? This afternoon answered Bansby. Fix was standing behind them, and he heard all this. Can I go with you to Shanghai? He asked Fogg. Of course, Fogg answered. Fix went to the post office at once and quickly sent a telegram to Scotland Yard. Sauda and fix a boat on the tanker, and the little boat, boat left for Shanghai. They traveled through two bad storms. Sometimes the weather behind them was windy, and this helped them. Sometimes it was windy in front of them, and they went more slowly. At last, they arrived in the sea near Shanghai on 7th of November at 7 o'clock. They were too late. The big American ship, the General Grant, was coming out of the harbor in front of them. Bunsby singled to them, said Fogg. So Bunsby singled to the General Grant. The ship stops and Fogg, Mr. Alder, and Fix got on. On 13th of November, Passepartout arrived in Yokohama with no money, so he left the Cartanic and looked for work. Battlecar's circus was in Japan, and the owner, Mr. Battlecar, was looking for acrobats. Passepartout was an athlete when he was younger, so he took the job. The circus was leaving for America the next day. Good, I can go to the America with them, thought Passepartout. Mm -hmm. uh, Fogg, Mrs. Aoda and Fix were on the General Grant and on uh, 14 November they arrived in Yokohama. There Fogg and Mrs. Aoda went on to the Kinetic. They found uh, Passepartout's names in the book of passengers' names, but they couldn't find Passepartout anywhere. Where is he? asked Mrs. Aoda. I am very worried about him. I don't know, but we must leave for America on the General Grant at 6 o'clock, Fox said. Fox mm -hmm. had some free time that afternoon, so he went to see Mr. Butlucas' circus. Paspartu saw his old master in the audience there. Mr. Fox, he shouted. Paspartu was in the show as one of the acrobats. Lots of acrobats were standing on him. But as soon as he saw Fogg, he ran to him. All the acrobats fell down onto the floor and were hurt. Mr. Butlucar was very angry about this. You've damaged my show and my good name, he cried. Somebody must pay for that. Fogg was very happy to see his old servant again. He wanted to take Passport to, with him to America. But first he had to pay Mr. Butlucar for all the hurt acrobats and for damaging his good name and his circus show. That evening Fogg, Passepartout and Mrs. Aoda went onto the General Grant. They didn't see Fix when he followed the smiling onto the ship. In his hand the detective at the last had the, paper, the papers from Scotland Yard, saying that he couldn't he could ar arrest Phyllis Fogg.
Chapter 5 Journey Across America Mrs. Aoda, Falk, and Passepartout were sitting and talking together on the General Grant. I'm very sorry, I left the two of you in Hong Kong, and I feel miserable about that, explained Passepartout. But I was very tired after I bought your ticket from Yokohama, and I fell asleep in a cafe. Then, when I woke up, it was late and I hurried onto the Carnatic because it was leaving a day earlier. I knew that, but you didn't, so you weren't on the ship. Passepartout didn't tell his master about the Scotland Yard detective, Mr. Fix, because he didn't uh, want to worry him. Uh, oh, Passepartout, we very uh, worried about you when you didn't come back to the hotel in Hong Kong, said Mr. Aouda. We had to get a sa small ship to Shanghai, and then we took the general ground to Yokohama. We found uh, your name on the list of passengers on the Carnatic when we arrived there, but we couldn't find you. And then you met Mr. Frog again at the circus. So now we have uh, got you back with us. This is the important thing. Yes, said, the mi said Frog. We are very lucky. Later that day, Passepartout met Fix uh, coming out of his cabin on the General Grant. As soon as uh, he saw the detec detective, he ran at him and started to hit the him. What are you doing here? I hate you, Fix, sh he shouted, and uh, played a trick on me in that cafe in Hong Kong. Why are you trying to shop my master traveling around the world? You have you are wrong about Mr. Fogg, he isn't gentleman, Fix. He is a good and general man. You are right, said Fix. I am, said Passepartout. He was very surprised. Yes, I wanted to stop Fogg in Egypt, in India and in uh, Hong Kong. Why are you telling me this? Do you want me to hit you again? No, wait, uh, listen to me. I could arrest folk uh, in all those places, because the people uh, there are friendly with Britain. But I didn't have the papers from Scotland's yard to do it. Uh, and have you got the papers to arrest my master now? Asked uh, Passepartout. Yes, I've got them. Uh, they were sent to me in Japan on the Carnatic. But those uh, papers aren't uh, any good to me now. I can't arrest uh, Mr. Frog in an America ship, American ship uh, or in America. I, it must uh, be in England. But your master wants to go back there, I think. Yes, he does. So now I'm not going to stop him. I'm going to help him to travel faster. And when we arrive in England, I arrest him. Then we will learn if he is the gentleman tree or not. So can you and I be friends now? No, we can't be. No, we can't never be friends. Answered Passport too. But maybe we can work together. After that, Fix stayed in his cabin while the ship crossed the Pacific Ocean. He didn't want to meet Fogg or Miss Yoda or to see Passepartout again on the journey. General Grant arrived, arrived in San Francisco in the morning of the 3rd December. The New York train was leaving that evening. In the afternoon, Fogg and Mr. Aouda went to the passport office for a visa. They met Fix in the street. Mr. Fix, what are you doing here? I last saw you in Japan, laughed at Fogg. Yes, well, I am traveling to Europe now. That's funny. Where to? said Mr. Aouda. Maybe we can travel together, said Fix. What a good idea, said Fogg. The, uh, then they walked into a big meeting in the street. Come a feel for dart, shouted some people on the left. Mandible for do dart, shouted some people on the right. Then all the people started fighting. One man wanted to hit Fogg, but Fix stood in front of him. The man punched Fix in the face and not Fogg. Thank you for that, said Fogg. Not at all, said Fix. He had a breeze on his cheek.
they were staying at the international hotel in the San Francisco, so they went back there. Passport 2 found it all very strange. Mr. Peaks was telling the truth. He's going to help us now, he thought. That evening, Pope, Mrs. Aunda, Passport 2 and Peaks went to the station and got on the train for New York. On journey, they crossed on an old bridge very fast and it fell into the river behind them. Soon after that, some Sax Indians arrived on their horses. They wanted to climb onto the train, and they heard some passengers with their guns. Paspatut was very brave, and he fought them, but the Indians took him and rode away with him. Fog, Mrs. Aoda, and Fix got off the train at the next station, in the little town of Konya. Fogg went at once to army camp with them and asked some American soldiers to go with him to look for Passepartout. They found him, took him uh, from the Sarek Indians and brought him uh, back later that day. Then Fogg, Mrs. Aouda, uh, Passepartout and Fix had to wait for the next day train to New York. But the next train was going to pass through Kyonia station that evening, so they had to wait for a long time. I'm sorry, Mr. Fogg. I've made you late again, cried Passepartout. And it started snowing and it didn't stop. Soon there was lots of snow in the, on the ground. Oh no, how can we travel fast over all that snow, said Fix. An old man from Kenya heard the detective talking and said, Why don't you try using a sledge? A sledge? answered Fix. That's a good idea, but what can you uh, can we use to pull it? Horses can pull a sledge through uh, deep snow. That's true, but if you put some sails on it, it'll uh, go very fast. So, Fruk Passaput, uh, Mrs. Aude, and uh, Fix left Kearney that afternoon on a sledge with sails. Uh, they traveled very quickly over the snowy uh, country and soon arrived in uh, Omaha. From there they took a fast train to New York. On the 11th of December they arrived in New York, but they were 45 minutes late. Their ship is China was uh, going to Liverpool without them. Uh, chapter 6 Across the Atlantic to England In New York, uh, Harbor Folk uh, looked all day uh, for a new ship to take him to Liverpool, but he couldn't uh, uh, find one. Uh, late uh, that evening, uh, he spoke with the Miss Auda, Paspartu, and Fix. Spent the night at the hotel, he said. We can come back there tomorrow. So they took a carriage to an expensive hotel in New York City for the night. The next morning, Frog woke up early. He left the others at the hotel and hurried back down to the harbor. At 7 o'clock, he spoke to a man on a small ship there the Hen Henrietta. I am Phyllis Fogg of London. I want to go to Liverpool. Where are you going? I am Andrew Speedy of Cardiff, and we are going to the south of France. Will you take me to Liverpool? No, I won't. We are going to the south of France. Who is your captain? Can I speak with him? I am the captain of the Henrietta, said Speedy. Then can I speak with your ship's owner? Maybe he will agree to take me to the to the Liverpool. I'm the owner of the Henrietta too, said Speedy. I see, said Fogg. Look, Captain Speedy, if you agree to take me to Liverpool, I will pay you well. Money doesn't interest me, answered Speedy. Then I will buy your ship from you and pay you to, ta to sail to Liverpool. No, you won't. I'm going to the south of France. Fogg looked at him with interest and then said, very well, will you take me and my three friends to the south of France? How much will you pay? asked Speedy. Two thousand pounds. For every one of you? Yes, eight thousand pounds in all. What do you say? asked Fogg. Captain Speedy thought for, for a minute 
8,000 pounds was a lot of money for four passengers and he didn't have to change his plans at all. All right, he said, I will. When do you sail? At nine o'clock. Very good, I will go for my friends at once, said Fogg, and he hurried back to the hotel and tell, to tell them all the good news. So at nine o'clock on 20th December, Fogg, Miss Old, uh, Passepartout and Fix left New York on the Henrietta. Later, when they were at sea, Fogg talked to the sailors on the Henrietta. They didn't like Captain Speedy very much because he was a hard man. So Fogg gave them all some money and explained that he needed to go to Liverpool, not France. The sailors all agreed to take him there. Because the captain didn't agree, the sailors took him, put him in his cabin and locked the door behind him. He shouted at them from inside his cabin but could do nothing to stop them. Four days later the Henrietta was crossing the Atlantic. I'm going to be late, cried Fogg. We must go faster. We can't, cried the sailors. There is no more coal. Then bring the captain to me, said Fogg. The sailors brought Captain Speedy to him at once. You criminal, where will we? cried the captain, looking angrily at Fogg. Sam days from Liverpool. What? Why you? Be quiet, listen. I want to buy you for ship, said Fogg. Oh, at least all the wooden things on it. I want to burn them. We've got no more coal, but we can burn wood in its place. You want to burn the Henrietta? Yes. So how much do you want one? Uh, for your ship. Well, I paid 25,000 uh, pounds for her. I'll give you 30,000 pounds for her. Do you agree? What about all the metal? Oh, you can keep that. I'm not interested in metal. Only the wood. Do you agree? I agree, said Speedy. Uh, so, that sails burn all the tables, the chairs, the doors, and the wooden boats from the floor. Uh, four days after that, the Henrietta arrived in the Queenston, in the west of Ireland. Uh, there was no m more wood on it at all. The apple's too far, so let's go off uh, here, said Fogg to Mr. Aouda. Passport and fix. Uh, and with that, Fogg paid Captain Speedy and all four passengers got off uh, the ship. Fix didn't arrest Fogg in Queenston. He was waiting for them to arrive in England before he did that. In Queenstown they got on a train and travelled to Dublin. There, there they got a fast ship to Liverpool. Uh, when they arrived in Liverpool, Fix arrested Fogg at last and uh, took him to prison. In prison, Fogg uh, looked at his diary. Saturday, 23rd December. 11.40 a.m. We arrive in Liverpool. At 2 o'clock he looked at his watch. If I leave now and go to London on a fast train, I'll be at my club by 8.45 this evening, he thought. At half past three, fixed visited Fogg in prison with Mrs. Auda and passported. I'm sorry, Mr. Fogg, said Fix. We've got uh, the gentleman thief. He is a tall, handsome man. His name is James Trent. He was arrested three days ago. You are free to go. Angrily, uh, Fogg marched out of the prison. Then Fogg, Mrs. Auda, and Passaport ran to Liverpool station. They got on a fast train to London. The train arrived in London and uh, at 10 minutes to 9. Fogg was five minutes late for his meeting with Start. Fogg didn't want to go to his club late, so he went home with Mrs. Oda and Passepartout around the world in 80 days and 5 minutes. He was the loser. He only had 20,000 pounds in the bank after his long and expensive journey and he had to give it all to Stuart. The next day Fogg didn't want to go to his club. He felt sick and he didn't eat not anything. He stayed in his room all day and he didn't want to see or speak to anybody. Pasper too and Mrs. Oda uh, were very worried about him. Early that evening, Fogg uh, Fog called Pasper too to him. I want to speak to Mrs. Oda, he said. Will she see me? Pasper too went to speak to Mrs. Oda and then returned to his master. Yes, she will, he said. 
she's waiting for you in the living room. Soon, Fogg was sitting in a chair on the right of the fire in the living room. Mrs. Alda was sitting in the chair in front, in front of him, on the left of the fire. The fire gave a soft orange light to everything in the room. You wanted to see me? began Mrs. Alda. Yes, I wanted to speak to you, he answered. Well, I am listening, she said. For a time the only noise in the room came from the wood fire. Then Fogg spoke again. Look, I'm sorry for bringing you here, he said in a sad voice. When I met you for the first time, I had money. Now I'm a poor man, and you deserve better than me. Don't worry, said Mrs. Oda in her soft voice. You rescued me from danger, and I followed you around the world since then. I feel safe with you. So will you marry me? asked Ford Fogg. Of course I will, answered Miss Oda. But when? As soon as we can. Tomorrow, maybe, said Fogg. Fogg told Passepartout at once. Mrs. Oda and I want to marry tomorrow, Monday, 23rd December. Can you organize it? Yes, of course, said Passepartout. And he hurried out to organize things at once. But he soon returned. Mr. Fogg, he cried, you can get married tomorrow. Why not? asked Fogg. He was very surprised. Because tomorrow is Sunday, and nobody gets married on a Sunday. Uh, what are you saying, Pospertau? Today is Sunday 22nd, and tomorrow is Monday. No, Mr. Fogg. Today is Saturday the 21st December, not Saturday the 22nd. Uh, when you travel east around the world, you get an extra day. So you aren't late for your meeting with Mr. Stewart at the club after all. It's tonight, but you must hurry. Fogg quickly put on his hat and coat. He walked out of his front door and took a carriage down the road to his club at once. Just before quarter the nine on 21st December, Fogg entered the club. Everyone was very surprised to see him there. Here I am, gentlemen, he smiled. Uh, then he went over and spoke to Stuart. I've won, he said. I've traveled around the world at 80 days. You said that I couldn't do it, but I said that I could. And I have done it. Where's my 20,000 pounds? Monday morning, uh, Mr. Phileas Fogg, the world traveler, married Mrs. Alder. He was a very happy man. Passepartout was happy too. He was happy to be back in London in Mr. Fogg's comfortable house in Burlington Gardens. He was happy to have his quiet job back again. But most of all, he was very happy to be able to stay at home every day of the year and not to have to travel anymore.